Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Bobby here. Happy Thursday, uh, October 5th. I'm 20 days out until my 45th birthday. Uh, I'm going to go over two videos today, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday's uh, eating and training schedule. I'm behind schedule. So this one is for yesterday, Wednesday, um, a typical Wednesday. So it's a lot like Mondays, right? Again, I try to make sure I have a routine and a habit and a schedule so that I can um, make make my, my health and fitness a habit and not make it so difficult. Uh, it's not about discipline, it's not about uh, having willpower, it's about creating habits around your health and your fitness. So so Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays are my training days um, and also my boot camp uh, classes, my big, my big block of classes. So those days are all very, very similar, right? And I've, I've structured it so that I can train on those days, allow myself some glucose input, some carbohydrates, uh, again, in a time when my body is, is gonna do least damage with it, when it's least likely to store as glucose, but also, in a lot of ways, uh, the, the insulin response that you get when you have sugar, carbohydrates, glucose, uh, can aid in protein uh, synthesis and amino acid transport. So what that means in layman's terms is that when you have, when you break down muscle tissue and you do a great workout, having an, an immediate or shortly thereafter insulin spike, carbohydrate glucose intake uh, can actually aid in the process of repairing and rebuilding your muscles. That's why a lot, a lot of uh, protein shakes have uh, glucose or carbohydrates in it. So, um, so on those days, you know, again, I allow myself to have some carbohydrates to stave off and keep at bay any uh, temptations that might come up or anything I'm, that I'm hungry for or craving. Uh, I make sure I, I, I intermittently enter those into my schedule so that I don't just go off the, off the wagon one day and eat everything I see in sight. Okay, so it's important to schedule uh, those things that you know you're going to eat anyway. Uh, make sure you do those and eat those things on days where it's least damaging to your body. All right. So on Wednesdays, I, I do the same routine in the morning. I wake up at four o'clock. I have my water and my keto OS, my exogenous ketones at about 4.15. Right. Go downstairs, have my water. Again, get this, get everything in my body moving. Right. Get my, if it's cold enough, get my body uh, temperature to regulate, which forces my body into a metabolic state of, of calorie and fuel burning, uh, and then my and then give my body immediate fuel, in in the way of ketones, right? A, a a source of fuel that is not glucose that my body can use just like glucose, uh, even more efficiently, but give my body that right away so that I'm not going to be forced into a state of craving food. Uh, as many of us do shortly after waking up. So 4:15, water, ketones, right? I, I go upstairs, I get ready for for my work day. I shower uh, as I head out the door to go to my to go to my gym. At about 5:30, I start drinking my bulletproof coffee. Again, that's fat aided, fat induced coffee to provide a bridge after my body has consumed or used up for fuel the ketones. There's a bridge between that and my next meal, so that's going to be the fat. So, so you use um, use uh, XCT or MCT oil. That's a medium chain triglyceride. That's a fast absorbing, uh, easy to um, break down into energy fatty acid. So your body can use that pretty quickly. So I have that. I add to that heavy whipping cream. Uh, some people add butter. I do on, on occasion, but my mainstays are, are, as far as fat, are the MCT or XCT oil and the heavy whipping cream, right? So once my ketones run out at a, you know, you know, several hours that can hold you at bay and keep your body fueled. But once that runs out, uh, I have an immediate bridge between, between the ketones and whatever I eat next. All right. So same process, uh, from 5:30 to about 9:30, I'll have uh, that fat, that fat-induced coffee, right? That bulletproof coffee. I'll drink that. Uh, I'll sift that during my classes. Uh, Wednesday's my workout day, as I've said. So I'll start drinking my branched-chain amino acids, right? At about 9:30, about midway through 
my last class, right? In preparation for my workout, which starts at, after my last class or my last morning block of classes ends. So I'll get my body prepped for all the muscle breakdown I'm going to do um, early before the workout. And I'll, and I'll drink it during the workout and then post-workout. So the BCAs, again, they serve to give your body the building blocks it needs to repair muscles even before you break them down, right? So I'll start that before the workout. I'll sip that during the workout, and then I'll have a little bit left over for afterwards, all right? So on Wednesday, my Wednesday workout, uh, so I've been doing these crazy workouts on Wednesdays. You know, for four weeks, I was trying to do these 1,000 thousand rep ab workouts. So Monday is usually my intensive day in terms of real big body parts, real big muscle muscle movements, uh, multi-muscle, multi-joint, heavy lifting. So my deadlifts, my leg press, my heavy dumbbell presses. Uh, on those days for the last four weeks, I've been doing my thousand rep bicep and chest workout and my deadlifts and my, and my uh, leg presses. So um, again, that's because Monday is the, is the day you wanna get back into position to burn fat. So hopefully, if you've done your work on Monday, Wednesday does not need to be as intensive, right? It, it can and should be, or, or, or may be, but if you've, if you've worked really, really hard on Monday and put your body in position to, to have a depleted glycogen store, then you don't have to work as hard. You still, you, you still do full body workout. You still wanna burn through glycogen stores, but hopefully they're not as high as they were Sunday night, Monday morning. So because of that, because you did your work, hopefully, on Monday, and because you uh, fasted and had zero glucose on Tuesday, Wednesday's workout shouldn't require as much effort to get you into position to be in fat burning mode on Thursday, right? So that's the idea. Now that might take several weeks and months to get your body to the point where you can do that every week. Um, but once you get acclimated to this new structure, you should be able to deplete most of your glycogen on Monday, uh, finish it off on Tuesday, get into fat burning mode. And then Wednesday, that level of glucose glycogen storage should not be as high as it was on Sunday. So, which means that your your output and your fuel burning does not need to be as high, okay? So because of that, my Wednesdays are are a an opportunity for me to give my joints some rest, sometimes to not go as heavy, to work on something that, that might challenge me, like mentally, uh, like a thousand, thousand hanging abs workout. So yesterday, so this Wednesday, I decided to do this, this uh, box jump and burpee workout and for me it was more mental because I because I you know I like doing stuff that's challenging uh, I don't ever want to be in a in a state where I can't do anything and that and I'm actually afraid of that that I'll get too old where I can't do box jumps or burpees or sprint so if I haven't done something in a while then it kind of scares me a little bit so I haven't done box jumps in a while so I had to say and I, I, I like having these cool like uh, themes, right, or, or something that sounds cool, like 1,000 thousand rep ab workout or or 300 workout. So, my, so you know, based on the movie, I, 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 one of my new things is this 300 workout. So I was, I was literally in, in my classes, and I, I said, you know, I'm going to try to do 300. Well, I said 200 initially. I said 200, 100. I said 10, 10 box jumps, 10 burpees for 10 rounds, right, 100 100 box jumps total, 100 burpees total. And one of my students, one of my one of my favorite students, one of my more consistent students, Tracy, she said, "Well, I did 200 burpees the other day." And even though I've done a workout similar to that, in fact, I gave her that workout. Uh, I loved it because it challenged me. So I said, "You know what? I'm gonna do I'm gonna do 300." So I put it in my head. I told I told people. You know, one thing, one thing I recommend is that you tell people what you're going to do. Uh, you put it out there into the universe. You make yourself accountable to this new fitness journey, this new, this new commitment to fitness. So, you know, instead of just keeping it to yourself, tell the world that, that you, you've changed your, your attitude about health, that you're going to be healthier. You're going to go to the gym. 
you know, put it on Facebook, you know, put, you know, buy new clothes, tell your friends about it. Uh, make, make the commitment hard to go back on. All right. So anyhow, so I told everybody I was going to do this workout and I did it. So I did, I did a 300 back and chest circuit first, right? Just TRX back pulls and dumbbell presses back and forth, 45 seconds work, 15 seconds rotate and rest. And I counted. So I counted up to 300 and I was done. That was meant to be a warm up for my, for this burpee and, and box jumps. So I then did, and I'll, I'll put a link to the video. I then did uh, 10 box jumps and 10 burpees for 15 rounds, right? So 150 box jumps total, 150 burpees. And then, uh, and I planned to do legs and then biceps and triceps, didn't get to it. it took 35 minutes to do the, uh, the box jumps. So my point in all that is that because I did that, I depleted my glycogen and glucose a lot. And I could tell that by, by how I felt. I was jittery, I was shaking, you know, so I was really low in blood sugar. Um, I went home and weighed myself and I was, I was actually I wasn't as light as I sometimes am, um, or I didn't lose as much as I, as I often do, but the starting point wasn't as high. Uh, my glucose levels weren't as high as, as they can be after I've kind of, um, you know, on a Monday for sure. Um, and, and, and so usually I'd, I would do a workout like that on a Monday. And so I would see a big dip in the change in, in, in my weight based on the glycogen depletion. But because it's a Wednesday and the starting point is lower for me on a Wednesday, um, and you can only go so low. You know, once your body gets rid of all the water and the stored glycogen, then uh, that's it. Unless you, you know, you're dipping the body fat, but body fat gets... Um, transferred and and oxidized slowly and when you don't have a lot of body fat left you don't see big changes so um yeah so once the water and the glycogen was gone there's not much much more to do so the change wasn't that great but i could feel my body um like my 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 glucose levels were low i felt lethargic and i felt tired and run down so um because of that when i got home i was craving like some fried rice. I hadn't I haven't made fried rice in a while. Um I normally wouldn't have fried rice um well on a Wednesday or a Monday or a Friday on a workout day is ideal but I haven't been even craving glucose or carbohydrates lately. So even though in the beginning of this process I recommend you schedule your glucose or carbohydrate intake on days that you're least likely to store it right on days you work out as you move along you will find yourself wanting and craving glucose and carbohydrates less and less and so even on days you train you won't feel the need to replenish or eat the bread or pasta i know you don't believe me but that that craving will go away as you begin to rely more on dietary fat and then body fat so I haven't had fried, this fried rice that I make um, in a long time. And now the fried rice, I make sure, I always tell you guys, make sure that when you have glucose, take measures to make it less, uh, less carbohydrate intensive, right? So when you have uh, a carb, make sure that more of the meal is non-carbs, more protein and fat. When you have a carb, make sure at least, at least part of the carbohydrate meal is healthier versions of the carbohydrates. So brown rice as opposed to white rice. And then uh, whole grain or wheat bread as opposed to white bread. Uh, whole grain pasta versus white pasta. That's gonna help you, right, with the insulin spike. You're still gonna have the sugar in your body, but it won't be as quick into your bloodstream forcing your body to release insulin, which forces your body to get rid of all the uh, sugar in your blood, which makes you hungry again. So by doing this, by, by, by adding other protein and fat to the meal by making sure the the carbohydrate you do eat is nutrient based so it's whole grain that reduces the insulin spike and helps you long term wise so when i make this fried rice i i make it as i make it as least damaging as possible so i use brown rice but i mix that with cauliflower crumbled cauliflower you can buy that in safeway or knob hill most supermarkets carry this you know, before you had to go get cauliflower and shave it. Now you can buy 
cauliflower crumbs uh, in in the in the fridge section of your of your of your uh, of your grocery store, and so I I made uh, two bags of whole, whole grain rice, uh, brown rice, and then I mixed in two packages of this sh uh, shredded uh, cauliflower, and so that was my base. And then I added to that chicken and shrimp and onions and and green onions. And so even though I had carbs, it was not as carbohydrate uh, dense as a typical fried rice might be right but it still it still was able to meet you know my hunger so I had that for dinner last night right that was later though so I'm gonna go back I'm sorry I'm kind of skipping ahead uh, but four o'clock 415 I had my water and ketones 530 to 930 I had my BCAs right um, Sorry, 5.30 to 9.30, I had my Bulletproof coffee, right? So 4.15, water, ketones, 5.30 to 9.30, Bulletproof coffee, right? 9.30, before the workout, throughout the workout, and then post-workout, had my BCAs, right? I did my burpee and box jump workout. I drove home, right? I didn't even do my, my, my second workout, like I, I occasionally do after my noon class. So I drove right home after... Um, my noon class got home a little bit early normally i would go right to my son's school uh running late uh, but i got home early and i was just tired so i sat down and normally i would i would either get a snack you know or i would wait usually i don't i don't eat until two o'clock but i got home around i'm sorry three o'clock but i got home around 1 30 so normally i might get a snack then uh or something but i didn't i just had my bcas um, and I was going to make a shake, but didn't have time. So I went, picked my son up at three o'clock, came home, 3.30, uh, about, about three o'clock, came home and I made a protein shake, right? So the purpose of, of the protein shake and, and why it's, why it's very important as part of your overall strategy is that it does two things. Right for people who are trying to put on weight and put on muscle, it's an additive to what you're eating. Right, it's very hard to eat calories. Right, when, especially when you're full. So it it helps people who have a hard time gaining weight to eat first and then between meals uh, eat additional calories via protein. And and you can determine how healthy that meal is. Right, you can determine how much protein, how much carbs, if any, are in that. So that's a great way to add healthy. Um, healthy weight. If you're trying to get leaner and lose weight, it's a great way to replace a meal, right? Or prevent getting to a point where your body gets hungry and you eat whatever. So oftentimes when I come home and and I feel like I'm, I might be at, at risk of having something that's not as healthy, or I want to make sure I get healthy nutrients and control the environment, I'll have a shake. Before, my, my protein shake, when I first started this process, was very, very, very sugar intensive because I would add all kinds of fruit to it, right? So fruit has, has a lot of sugar in it. So I don't recommend on your off days, on your days you're trying to burn fat, that you have fruit. You can have leafy vegetables, but no fruit because of the, the sugar content. So... Um, when I first started doing this, I made sure I had my nutrient makeup shakes, I called them, on my days I train to make sure. Because when, you, when you're doing this, this high fat or moderate fat, high protein, and you're fasting, it's very easy to miss out on nutrients, right? And all the things that you get from fruits and vegetables. So it's very important on the, on the, the days where you train to make sure you make up for some of that. Now, multivitamin helps. Um, you know, vitamin C supplements help to make sure you get the nutrients, vitamin D, you know, uh, supplements. So, uh, but even with that, it's important to make sure you get some fruit uh, and obviously obviously vegetables in your diet, but have them at times where your body's not likely to store the extra sugar as fat. So in the very beginning on my workout days, I would come home and make this, you know, huge shake with protein powder, um, yogurt for the probiotic and then I would have frozen strawberries, frozen blueberries, uh, banana, spinach, 
you know, all the stuff that I that I that I couldn't have or didn't have on the days when I was trying to fast and cut into my body's fat stores. So I've kind of I've kind of reduced the amount the, the amount of times I do that 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 nutrient ketchup shake. Uh, I still do it, but not every workout day. But I still make sure when I come home I do something to get uh, my body in a position where it's not starving later, where I'm more likely to eat something that's not as as helpful for my long-term goals. So yesterday when I came home, I was I was home early. I I got my son came back and then made a shake. So my shake yesterday was two scoops of protein powder, the remainder of my coffee. Remember I said on days um, when I don't finish my bulletproof coffee, I still start my BCAs and I'll save that bulletproof coffee for later, for an off day or for later that night uh, in a protein shake. I'll go home and chill it, put it in, in my refrigerator. So I had some leftover bulletproof coffee. I added that to the two scoops of, of uh, protein powder, uh, some frozen spinach, handful of almonds, and uh, two one, two scoops of sugar-free ice cream, and then one big scoop of vanilla yogurt, vanilla Greek yogurt. So spinach, two scoops of whey protein, um, ice, uh, handful of almonds, and ice cream did I say that yeah so and then I added the, the the coffee to it so that that was my mid-afternoon snack if you will right kind of a meal so that was around three o'clock okay so that carried me um, for the next few hours right so that time period between when I get home three o'clock and when I go to bed 10 I have to make sure that my body gets number one the nutrients it needs Right after a workout, that your body's craving fuel, right to to aid in muscle recovery, um, and to do all the you know the important work it has to do after your workout. So it's important that you don't starve yourself necessarily after you work out, um, but you don't want to overdo it, right? Because the next day you want to be in position to burn fat. So a, a good way of preventing that is coming home and having a protein shake that's thick enough, that's rich enough to keep you satiated long enough to avoid the temptations that might come up as far as carbohydrates. So that's why I do it. So um, I did that and then I went to my evening. So that was about three o'clock, right? L literally 45 ounces of protein shake. I didn't finish it all. I, t I, I drink about 30 ounces of it. And then the rest I finished uh, Thursday morning, today. So uh, three o'clock I finished or I had my protein shake, and then um, that was it for most of the evening until dinner time. Uh, I I was making dinner, I was doing chores, doing work. Uh, had to leave to my evening training basketball team at 6:30, and so um, I made another uh, BCA drink. You know, sometimes when I work out, I'll, I'll double up that day. Uh, normally, I don't finish it. Um, so I'll have half of a BCA drink basically. Um, so I, I do that for energy and to make sure my body isn't too broken down and fatigued. So as I was driving to my, um, evening class at about seven o'clock, I drank half of a, um, BCA drink. So about 10 ounces of BCAs and then, uh, train my class or train my team at seven 30, uh, came home got home at about 9.30 and had my dinner. So that dinner was the fried rice that I mentioned earlier. So the fried rice that was uh, partly rice, partly cauliflower and heavy on protein, shrimp and chicken. So that was my dinner and then I actually capped it off uh, with a sugar-free uh, skinny cow ice cream sandwich. You know, again, I, you know, I, I encourage you guys to make sure that you find find ways to keep your cravings at bay, right? Health, you know, in, in a less damaging way. So find no sugar substitutes for what you like, low to, low to no carb substitutes, um, and then over time remove them. But in the short short period or the short term, make sure you find ways to to uh, 
have what you want in limited capacities in a way that allows you to over time reduce those dependencies. All right, so real quick recap, four o'clock, 4.15, water and ketones, uh, 5.30 to 9.30, bulletproof coffee, 9.30 to about 12.30, basically, my BCAs, uh, about three o'clock, I have my protein shake, um, and then about um, 9.30, I have my dinner, all right? Actually, I forgot, so I'll go back. Uh, I was actually, the reason I was able to go until 3 o'clock on my protein shake, again, I, I told you I was really shaky um, from the drop in blood sugar after my workout. I actually had a uh, cliff bar right after my workout. So during my, my noon class, I had a cliff bar that was very high in carbohydrates. So um, because of that, I was able to to delay having that snack, if you will, or my or my protein shake uh, at three o'clock. That would have been a big gap between my workout at 12 and my protein shake at three. Uh, so I actually had that cliff bar at about 12, 15 or so. So, um, so yes, that's what I had. All right, so 415 water ketones, 530 uh, bulletproof coffee, uh, 930 BCAs, 1215 uh, or so, my Cliff Bar, 3 o'clock, I have my thick uh, protein shake, and then uh, on en route to my class, I had half of a BCA drink at about 730, and then 930, had my dinner, about 945, I had my dessert. All right, hope that was helpful. I know I kind of went in circles a little bit. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to, to message me or post the messages uh, below. All right, guys, have a great day. Bye-bye.